and they I walk just it. love that. Oh, that Chris was beautiful. Esposito, five piece of work. He had scored a touchdown earlier, you recall. Jamison, quick uh, pass complete to the tight end, Jimmy O'Brien. And he fumbles the football as he got to the 25. And looks like Hofstra has recovered. So a key turnover here puts the ball in the Flying Dutchman's hands as uh, getting up after making the recovery, Courtney Walcott, I believe. And we'll look at it once again. Big turnover here. Big turnover is number 88. Jim O'Brien tries to get uh, some more yardage. It looks as though he's going to be called for a face mask. But he loses the football somewhere. And it was Courtney Walcott, number four, who came in eight, 48, made the hit. And a big, big turnover gives Hofstra the ball with 2.17 to go here in the third quarter. They lead by three. First and 10 from around the 23. And busting right through there. Looks like another fumble. And looks like St. John's has recovered. However, there is a flag on the play. And this the St. Should John's be. fans roaring. But let's wait and see what that call this is. This one should be. be coming back. I think his offsides on St. John's looks to be number 59. Jeff Demise, De De Simone, rather. We'll take a look again. Look to the left side of your screen, bottom left of your screen. You'll see number 59 get off the mark very fast. And gets in on Pat O'Connor. The fumble I still cannot see. Well, Simone made the play, as you see. And there is an injury down on the field to a Hofstra play. Looks like it's quarterback Pat O'Connor that they're working on. And uh, that could be a very ill-timed loss. Their backup quarterback, Rich Codella, has played sparingly. He has just... Uh, thrown two for eight, 42 yards this year. O'Connor is such a key man for this team. But he is being worked on. In case you just tuned in, let's recap the scoring in this game. It was uh, St. John's jumping very quickly in front, 14 to nothing, as uh, they had a Jamison to Esposito six-yard pass after pass interception set it up a 17-yard drive. Then Blygen with a nine-yard run made it 14 to nothing. That was a 49-yard drive as you see O'Connor being helped off the field. Chuck Benziano then had a 100-yard kickoff return for Hofstra to make it 14-7. Uh, Jamison on a one-yard run made it 21-7, capping a 73-yard drive. And uh, it was then St. John's, or rather Hofstra coming back, a 35-yard drive. McKenna on one play, a 35-yard run to make it 21-14. At halftime, we were tied 21-21. Mullins with a 17-yard run. And we're 31-28 as St. John's is trailing Hofstra. And Hofstra puts it in play with Codella, number 17, now in at quarterback. Handing off and a fumble. And it will be St. John's ball. So just like that, the fumble, Mullins fumbling the football, I believe. And it is recovered by St. John's, Tony Barusa, number 50. So they say lightning doesn't strike twice. <laughs> it struck twice. Baruso comes up with a football as he gives his offensive unit fine field position. Bob McKenna just could not hold on to the football. So a big break here for St. John's. First and 10 from the 35-yard line. A minute 49 to go in this third quarter. We've had a wild one here. Jamison. Under pressure now, gets it off incomplete. Cleary was the man he was looking for down on the 25, and Carl Pate was defending number 48 on the play. So it'll set up second down. The mistakes, as we pointed out, Emerson Boozer at the top of the show, could be the difference when you have two easily matched, uh, very closely matched teams, as well as the kicking game, and certainly both figure at this point. It has boiled down to basically that. St. John's trailing by three, send down Cleary wide to the right. O'Brien uh, split off the end position about five yards as they send three wide receivers to the right side. Jamison on the draw play to Graziano, and he's got a big hole. He may go. Graziano inside the 10, down to the eight-yard line. A 27-yard <laughs> run on the draw play to Mike Graziano. He sent his three wide receivers out to the right and gave it to the only...
That, that was a, quite a call. When you've got a quarterback like Jameson that everybody watches and respects, the call a draw play in a situation like this had to be the fooler of the day. It worked very well as Graziano weaved his way down field. We thought he was going to go. And it sure looked like it. First and goal from the nine. Graziano, 53 yards, carries six. Complete now, diving for the end zone, Casa, but he's out of bounds at around the one-yard line. So the big fullback who catches passes uh, very well, comes up with a good catch there, and it'll be second and goal from the one. Nick Passa, big kid out of North Rockland High School up in Rockland County. He's caught uh, six passes for 81 yards this year. Cleary winds up wide to the right. On the bottom of your screen, Chris Esposito, wide to the left. Did you see Jamison bark out signal? Quarterback sneak, and he's in for the touchdown. And St. John's has taken the lead, 34 to 31. Todd Jamison with his second touchdown quarterback sneak, and the Redman fan love it. That man doesn't love it right there. We'll look at it once more. <laughs> Again, you'll see James about the left. He just cleans his lowers his head and follows that big offensive line he's Steve got Steve Goldberg, 72. Job. The tackle was uh, considerably helping out along with Bobby Capriello as he went off that side of the line. And now we are going to have a very important try for an extra point. This will give Ostra, or rather St. John's, a four-point lead as Tony Ragusa who is four for four, trying to make it five for five. High snap, but it's pulled down, and the extra point is good. The kicking game has been perfect for both teams this afternoon, and with a minute and nine seconds to go in the third quarter, there's the story. The Redmen of St. John's 35 and the Flying Dutchman of Hofstra 31. All right, how many points do you think we'll score today? We see a total of, uh, what's that, 66? 66 points and three quarters of football, yet another quarter to go. It could reach 100. Well, I'll tell you, Emerson, the fans who are not here in person are missing quite a football <laughs> game. We hope you're enjoying it on the Long Island Sports Network. 35-yard drive, four plays. Jamison, a one-yard run. Jamison has three touchdowns now this afternoon. I correct myself earlier. Three touchdown runs, one a six-yard run, one a one-yard run, and the other one a one-yard run. We talked about him being the franchise, and uh, he is doing quite a job, bruised ribs and all. Thus far, he has done a tremendous job in moving the offense. Well, he scored four touchdowns in one game. That's a school record. He did it last year. The dangerous Venziano for Hofstra, who broke one for 100 yards and nearly broke one earlier, gets across the 25 and down to the 26 yard line by Mike Perron. So we'll see what Hofstra has here as they trail by four with a minute and two seconds to go. And Pat O'Connor is healthy, so he's back in the game. That's quite important as the Hofstra quarterback is back in. All right, we're back to the live action right here now, but let's look at that draw play that set up the touchdown. Number 23, Mike Graziano. The big key in here, fine-looking play. They got St. John's down in the scoring territory. Okay, so O'Connor from the 26, first and 10, handing off. Bianchini trying to turn the corner, dives out of bounds as he crossed the 30 up to around the 31-yard line where it will be second down. Billy Gluck, the freshman cornerback, came up to make this stop. 5'11 on 60 pounder from Holy Cross High School in Flushing. It's second down and five from the 31. O'Connor has a possible concussion, but will play. That's the word from the sidelines from Joel Blumber. So Mr. O'Connor, a tough kid from Lindenhurst, remains in the quarterback. Mullins and Cimillo racing off crossfield. No, check it. It was number 27 who made the play for St. John's racing across the field. And what a play that was by Rich Morrison, who just came into the ball game. Safety out of uh, Malvern, Valley Stream Central High School, the 5'10", 185-pound sophomore showed great speed on that one. Yes, he did, because he, pre he prevented uh, uh, Mullen from turning upfield for a bigger gain on possibly the first down. You'll see coming number 27 right here, a great low tackle. Big third and three from the 33-yard line for the Flying Dutchman. This will be the last play probably of the third quarter, about 15 seconds remaining. Big fullback, uh, McKenna will not make the first down. Looks like he's maybe a half a yard short. 
Let's see where they marked the ball. He had to get to the 36. Clock ticking down. That's going to be the end of the third quarter. So with the score, St. John's uh, 35, Hofstra 31. We'll be back with the fourth quarter. You're watching the Long Island Sports Network. Life has left you stranded. Ah, they're made in the stress. But the Toyota Tercel lift back pick you up. Going my way, big boy? Ah, yes indeed, yes indeed. The Toyota Corolla Tercel. Toyota's high mileage front wheel drive car. With room, room, and more room. Nice car. Where to, my desert flower? Philadelphia. The Toyota Tercel. Makes my heart palpitate with excitement. Tercel, yes indeed. Toyota. Here's to good friends. Tonight is kind of special. The Hi, guys. Well, look who's back. Okay, Paul Bunyan. Let's go watch some of this burn. You always work your guests this hard. You got enough strength left to lift a low and brow? Low and brow? I'll use two hands. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brow. You know the work's pretty hard, but the pay is not bad. Barry Landers and Emerson Bozer back here at Hofstra Stadium. We're going to have a measurement before we have the first play of the fourth quarter. Very big measurement here. It would appear that uh, they are a bit shy, which would make a very critical fourth down situation coming up. Hope that you're enjoying the LISN coverage of today's game. I remind you that our next LISN coverage will be the Catholic Soccer Championship. That'll be on November 6th, followed by the Nassau County A and B Championship back here at Hofstra University and the Suffolk County Boys and Girls Championship. And following that, the Nassau Suffolk Boys and Girls Class A Championship. So we've got great soccer coming your way and more football coming up in December. Well, as you saw, fourth down, and it looks like Hofstra will be punting fourth and a half yard from the 35. And Barry Cavanero uh, will be doing the punting right here, averaging 35 yards a kick. Back to receive it, Billy Samillo, the only man back. And it's a fine kick. He waves for a fair catch and will take it at around the 25-yard line, where the Redmen leading by four, 35-31, will put it in play. So we start the fourth quarter here, and it's been firework after firework, so I doubt if the score is going to end this way. No way, Barry. Uh, both clubs have moved the football uh, very well offensively, and there's no way that uh, either team is going to settle for a four-point lead at this point. Todd Jamison, who has been in there all the way, came in with the bruised ribs. Three touchdown runs, passed for another touchdown, back to throw on first down, now looking to scramble, loses the ball, flag goes down on the play, and let's see what the call is going to be. <laughs> it looks like it's going to be a holding penalty. Uh, field judge is after one of St. John's linemen, looks like who's at number 76. Six. Richie uh, Palladino. Palladino. Right. I don't know what Palladino did, but I would venture to say that it was a holding, a late holding call. Well, Richie is 6'2", 255 pounds. A junior from Lindenhurst. He's the best blocker, reportedly, on the team. Very strong legs. And let's go to another look at that. Perhaps we can pick it up. Yeah. We'll try to find out what happens, but uh, Ostra covers very well downfield. I look for number 76. Uh, Richard Palladino, you'll see at the tail end, far left of your screen, he comes out, and all the officials start to look. We didn't it might have been a clip, uh, I think that might have been the call, but he was involved in the play a little late, nevertheless. Yeah. So it sets up first down at about 25 yards, and uh, they'll put the ball, now check it, it'll be second down from the 11-yard line. They've got to go all the way up to the 35, so it is about 25 yards. Jamison rolling far side now in trouble touch back oh look at him go to the 30 he may go he's gone Barry what a run <laughs> by Todd Jamison <laughs> fourth touchdown of the day as he ties the St. John's record <laughs> Look at the happy Jimmy O'Brien and the rest of the St. John's Redmond. An unbelievable run by Todd Jamison that ties his own record for the school record of four touchdowns set last year against Maris. And we'll look at that one again. 
We've got a replay. You just watch it yourself. Number 15 here. He comes on a rollout. It's not really a pass. He's rolling out. Finds himself in trouble. Gets great help. Look at that wall there. Great help from his Redmond. And now Todd is on his way. Does his thing here. A little juke, a little step. And he knows it's all over at this point, Barry. He's coasting. Just a marvelous run. 89-yard drive. Mr. Jamison going 89 yards. We've had big plays. They talked about him being the big play man. And for Mr. Jamison, that is the longest run of the school history. Uh, four or five yards longer than the one earlier that Blygin had run an 84-yard You can see the extra point good by Ragusa. And now it is 42 to 31. St. John's leading by 11, but there's still plenty of time. 14 <laughs> minutes and seven seconds. For Hofstra, remember, they came back from a two touchdown deficit Hofstra, to take the lead. Hofstra can strike as quick as lightning. They're called electric couplers at defense. They give a couple of those charges to the offense. They'll go. Well, it's worth looking at once again on that Jamison run, and here it is. Oh, it's a view. Let's look at the blocks that we can the pick up, because here. I think number 72 gives him a good block, Steve Goldberg. Here he comes over. 72 and 65, 72. Mike Caparata, 65. Richie Palladino, 76, I think, was helping out. Now look Hopperman, at this move. 71. He oh. gets right by Mateo there, who's a tough guy to get by, and he's off to the races. Jameson now with 134 yards rushing and 15 carries. And uh, that could be his career high for the year. We'll check it out. Right. Seattle waits for the ball to bounce and will take it at the 10. Remember, this guy went 100 yards last time, the opening kickoff or second kickoff of the game, and he's down at the 26-yard line. Barry, you can bet uh, that some of the pro scouts are going to take a look at this uh, Mr. Todd Jamison and try to visualize him as a punt return or a halfback, sort of a Bruce Hopper type bowl or the young uh, young kid from Syracuse for the Giants has now. The Giants have now, rather. That's right. Jamison, uh, high for the year, was 126 yards rushing against Maris, so he surpassed that already. First and 10 from the 26 for the Flying Dutchman, trailing by 11. In motion, Biancini. O'Connor rolling as they option there, decides to keep it, and he picks up about five yards before he's driven out of bounds on the far side, and driven out by Billy Cimillo. So the clock stops with 13.54 remaining. As you look at Mr. Cimillo, who's been all over the field today, it'll be second and three from the 33, a seven-yard pickup for O'Connor. And O'Connor on the day so far rushing has picked up nine yards and a couple of carries. Tony Woods at the bottom of your picture, flank wide to the left. As Dennis Blygin is playing him one-on-one -on -one over there, single coverage. He's a speedster, Woods is. In motion, Biancini. And handoff right up the middle. Mullins behind the lead block by McKenna. He could be off to the races. He'll cross midfield down to the 45-yard line before Dennis Blygin came over to make the stop. And Hofstra comes right back on the Bob McKenna run to give them good field position. We'll take another look at it. At this is number 31. Gets off to a great start here. You'll see him on a power play led by number 41, Mike Mullins. And uh, we think he's going all the way at this point. Hofstra is very explosive. Reminds you with VNCD, McKenna, and Mullins. They can move the football. Well, McKenna had 141 yards last week against WPI with the ECAC Player of the Week. Bianchini scooting around the left side, gets a block, tries to turn the corner, but cannot find defensive play by Blygin as he stayed right with him and stopped him from going even further around the corner and around the 41-yard line. So it'll be a pickup of around five, and it'll be second down. Oscar trailing 42-31. They had taken a 31-28 lead early here in the third quarter. But now here in the fourth, they trail 42-31. Second and five from the 41. Tony Pecarella has the left end. Now in motion. Mullins. And the handoff going to the fullback, McKenna. And he's going nowhere. Super defensive play by the nose guard, Jeff D. Simone. Number 59, the kid out of St. John the Baptist High School, Bayshore native. And it is now going to be a loss of two on the play, setting up third and seven from the 43. That's worth another look at. That's absolutely, that was a view. Watch number 59. Comes into your screen at a hurry. Bingo. Getting around number 60 or 61, uh, Dennis Pizziolis. Fine tackle. 
So a big third down play here. Third and about seven from the 43. O'Connor gets away from the on rush. Goes downfield and it's going to be complete. And it will be enough for the first down as I believe it was Tony Woods who made the catch downfield and was shoved back. It is Woods. And it is a very big first down for the Flying Dutchman. A big first down. We'll watch again. And also keep your eye on number uh, 59 again. Oh, see, Decimal, Decimal almost, again. almost gets there, but uh, Pat O'Connor at 6 feet, 180 pounds, 190 pounds, he's strong, pulls away, gets the ball downfield to Woods, picks up the first down. And it is first to 10 at the 34. Decimo showing great quickness from that nose guard spot. Little guy, 5'9", 205, built like a fire plug. Just squeezes through those cracks. All right, trying to gain some yardage off the left side of the line was the big fullback, Bobby McKenna. And he's down to the 26-yard line. So Hofstra on a crucial drive, trying to close within a touchdown. With 11.55 to go in the game, it is now second and three from the 26-yard line. Woods flanks wide to the right top of the screen as our end zone camera picks up the shot. 31 behind the quarterback is McKenna. And a handoff going to the big fullback, and he goes nowhere. Stopped right inside by number 50, linebacker Tony Baruso. Jammed that play shut before it could get on track. No gain. It'll be third and three after the 26. Also number 77, Ed Harkins, was out on the tackle. Yeah, since that trout began <laughs> earlier, he played very well. He took a break on a touchdown. Six <laughs> tries for Mr. O'Connor, and he is uh, six for 15, passing for 86 yards, one touchdown, and two interceptions. All right, here's the scat back, trying to come around the side. Bianchini inside the 20 is going to be checked it inside the 25, down to the down the 23, very close to the first down before Billy Samillo came over to make the stop, and it will be enough for the first down. Excellent run by Frank Bianchini. He knew how far he had to go in, and uh, he got that first down. All the good runners know that, uh, Barry. They try to squeeze as much as they can. Once they get the first down, then they'll look slower. Hofstra with a quick huddle, 10.50 to go. As they line up quickly, Woods flank wide to the right. In motion, Mullins. O'Connor handing off to McKenna. And he cracks inside the 15, down around the 13-yard line. Bobby McKenna, who ran for 138 yards against Wacker. He's had some super games this year. You can see why. He has great leg thrust, and the uh, guy playing the fullback spot, he's only 195. He really hits the hole hard. He's smooth, too. I like the way his leg power and the smoothness of, of his ball carrier. Second and five from the 13. Ten minutes and ten seconds to go in the game. Oscar down by 11. Mullins in motion. Inside handoff and racing toward the goal line. Bianchini stopped inside the five. They've had trouble all day with those plays uh, inside St. John's, and they're stopped uh, that time inside the three. Hofstra is Billy Samillo with a game-saving or a game uh, a touchdown-saving play. It'll be first and goal for the two. This is a play that. Uh St. John has had difficulty handling it all, all day. It's something similar to what you might call a misdirection. Play of the action goes one way, the ball comes back the other. Barry? Well, out of the eye formation, one of the few times they're working out of the eye. Woods in motion. And Mullins to the goal line. He's in. Mike Mullins scores the touchdown. And just like that, with 9.34 to go in the game, it's 42-37. to 37. That's worth taking a look at. Watch your tailback in the eye position. Number 41, Mike Mullins. As Pat O'Connor and his offensive line unit. Bob McKinnon. They lead him in off the guard slot. Great bit, gazing. Oh, all you gotta do is hit it. There it is. So they'll try for two points in this situation here because a one-point conversion would only put them four points back. They want to get within three. O'Connor calling signals as they go for the two-point conversion. In motion, Bianchini. O'Connor rolling, looking into the end zone. It is complete to Bobby McKenna for the two-point conversion. It's 42 to 40. <laughs> St. John by... We'll make that 42 to 39. St. John by three. Field goal will tie this thing up now. We'll take another look at it, Barry. 
as Pat O'Brien rolls around to his right. And as you see, number 31, keep your eye on McKenna. He'll come back into your picture in a moment as Pat O'Brien just shovels the ball out two points. Sam, you called him Pat O'Brien. I know you meant Pat O'Brien. <laughs> Pat O'Brien, oh my goodness. But the way this is going, oh going <laughs> you'd be thinking of the Gipper in Notre Dame. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Pat O'Connor, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Well, it reminds me of the old Newt Rockney film, oh. right? With Ronald Reagan and Pat O'Connor and Pat uh, O'Brien. The emotions of this game. <laughs> what a game. And we hope, again, not to be redundant, but this is great football. And we hope that wherever you're watching on the Long Island Sports, come out and support, whether it's your high school football game in your area or college football. Post plays great football in the island. New York Tech, Stony Brook, Hofstra. You see this game, St. John's. It's a great way to spend an afternoon. And with no pro football around, if you need a football fix, <laughs> You gotta add right something. here. All right, big big kickoff here as Savillo decides to put a leg down and take the touchback, and it'll be first and ten for the Redmen at the 20 yard line. 73 yard drive, eight plays. Mullins a two yard run, and of course the conversion that time picked up on the two point play by St. John's as McKenna caught the pass, and we have a 42 to 39 game. We'll have first and ten coming up in just a moment. That'll be interesting to see. Will St. John's try to sit on a three-point lead? Mickey Kwiatkowski or Kwiatkowski talking to his offensive unit. Hopes that his defense now will get the ball back from in good position. Jamison. And this is the Graziano on the far side. He crosses the 20 up to around the 22-yard line before Lenny Sinisgalli, 5'11", 175-pound junior from Sachem, made the stop. And it will be second down and about, let's call it, eight yards to go. Jamison has 296-yard total offense today and has uh, four touchdowns to his credit. Not a bad afternoon's work for a kid who is questionable coming in today or for anybody for that matter. Pro set in the backfield, Jamison looking. Has time now, he's going to try to run, but this time he's not getting away. Jamison stopped it around the 20-yard line and in on the play... Great defensive effort by Ed Anbinder, number 92, also number 95, Sean Clifford helping out. And uh, it'll be a big third, and let's call it eight yards, no gain on that one. Clock shows, eight minutes, 58 seconds to go. St. John's with a three-point lead. And an obvious passing situation. Let's see what Mr. Jameson will do here. Again, three wide receivers to the right side. Jamison rolls to the near side, looking, and it's going to be nearly intercepted. Oh. In and out of the hands of Courtney Walcott, the freshman out of Brooklyn Tech, but Hofstra will get the football back. Well, Courtney has three interceptions, had two against Jersey City State just a couple of weeks ago. They nearly had one there. This is where the Flying Dutchman's electric company shows his character and knows that it has to stand up against the ever-pressuring number 15, Todd Jamison, and that they do. Uh, Courtney should have come up or could have come up with the interception, just didn't do it, but through it all, they have survived. He was looking for Jimmy O'Brien that time, and Courtney Walcott stepped right in front of O'Brien, had the interception, but dropped it. Jamison's kick. Mateo calling for the fair catch and will get it at the 47-yard line. So Hopka trailing by three, an excellent field position. Eight and a half minutes to go in this game. They trail by three, and they'll have the ball at their own 47. There's an injured player down for St. John's. And let's see, timeout has been taken by the official. It looks like it might be Nick Cassa. I'm not sure the big fullback who is trying to block it is Cassa, number 38. And play will be halted here for a moment as they work on Nick's leg. Certainly hope it's nothing serious. We were talking before about the connection with St. John's and Hofstra. And right now, before we do that, let's go to the sidelines and Joel Blumberg. Courtney Walcott, uh, the defense has had their problems today, but uh, you've got yourself a nice fumble recovery in center, but what's the reason? Fumble recovery? No, but the uh, defense is allowing uh, 42 points. Well, the quarterback on their side, he's really uh, agile out there. He can read his receivers and he's quick on his feet, so we have, you know, he can scramble. 
and it's a little tough picking them up. One thing good about playing defense, if you hold them now and the offense comes back, you still have a chance to look good. That's right. That's right. So we're just going to get the ball back for the offense again, and they're going to take it in. And we're going to win again. Okay, Barry. First and ten, Joel, from the 47-yard line. Hostia losing at this point by three with 8.30 to go in the game. As O'Connor fakes the handoff, now goes inside, racing with it. McKenna, he's going to be gone. <laughs> Bobby McKenna goes 53 yards. <laughs> they blew out inside, faked it up the middle with the fullback. Ba-boom. Woo! And they're going bananas here at Hofstra. They can't believe it. <laughs> You ask me if Coach McKenna or Coach Rick are going to sit. Coach Rick is going to sit on this seat? Oh, no way. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're going to look at another replay of that one. Uh, our cameraman can't even <laughs> find the ball carrier at this point. He got lost in the backfield. But number 31, Bob McKenna has the football and had it scored already. All right, important try for the extra point by Cavanaro. It is up, and it is perfect. So, <laughs> 46 to 42, and the Hofstra cheerleaders and the folks on this near side of the field just enjoying things as the Flying Dutchmen are literally flying right now. We've got 88 points. We're near about 100 points, right? Yeah, we still have eight minutes and 22 <laughs> seconds to go. Hey, we promised you some exciting football on this Long Island Sports Network. Every game we've had has been a has been a great one. See, Barry, I was an offensive player when I played. I like scoring. I like to see other points as all possible. Put that ball in the air, give it to the back, sort of run, let's score. Emerson Boozer <laughs> loving the offense, and uh, it's been a lot here today on a, just a magnificent day for football. Well, that last drive, 46 yards in one play, as again, Hofstra has demonstrated their ability on the big play this afternoon. They've had three big plays. McKenna, two big runs for touchdowns, and of course, the 100-yard kickoff. They have been explosive. Well, still plenty of time for the Redmen to come back with the likes of uh, Jamison. And the ball falls off the tee. <laughs> Jamison with uh, St. John's rushing record of 140 yards this afternoon. And he's passed for 132 yards. I think the ball was a bit tired of being lugged up and down the field too, Barry. That's why it fell off the tee. It wants the Rex also. Okay, Cavanaro to do the kicking. And back deep to take it is Samillo. And boy, look at the foot he's got into it. And it goes out of the end zone. And the wind doesn't appear to be much up here because it looks like it's quite, quite calm out there. But the way that ball was booted, and it looks like the wind may be going uh, with the kicker in that direction. There is a wind, Barry. If you take a look at the flags at the far end of the field. All right, uh, M, let's go down to the sidelines with another happy Hofstra lad. Bobby McKenna, you ever been in a game like this before? 88 points, and this isn't over yet. No, no, we're just we're running the ball a lot, scoring a lot of points, and passing, scoring a lot of points. And uh, I've never been in something like this. That last play, that was some run. So it's a simple play up the middle with double teaming on the uh, nose guard. I just cut it back, straight down the field. Okay, this one isn't over yet, Barry. Dennis Blygen, who hasn't carried very much this afternoon, uh, picks up a few yards up to around the 25 before Chuck Chowinski and Jamie LaBelle combined to stop him. Well, as we said, Hofstra said they were going to be able to stop the rushing attack, but they didn't figure on Mr. Jamison, the kind of rushing attack, not the normal, the scrambling attack that he's provided, and he's been unstoppable this afternoon. However, St. John's finds themselves trailing by four. Bobby McKenna, by the way, who Joel just had on, has a 159 yards on 17 carries, and I believe that may be a record for him. Second down here, and Jamison rolling, pulling out. Looks to go outside. Will wisely go out of bounds at the 27 to avoid getting hit. Jamie LaBelle and Courtney Walcott running him out of bounds. And that'll set up an important third down play here for that young man, Todd Jamison, and the St. John's Redmen. I don't think uh, Todd knew exactly where he was on the field. He cut it just a bit short. I'd say two and a half yards for the first down, maybe three. Uh, I think had he known exactly where he was, he could have possibly gotten another two. Third and three for St. John's. Throwing the sideline pass for Cleary, and he has enough for the first down as he got across the 30, round to the 32-yard line before Courtney Walcott and Tony Mateo were over there to contain him. But on the short little pass, so they do pick up the necessary first down yardage. It'll be up at the 31. Let's call it first and 10. 
I'd like to talk to both of these coaches next week when they talk about the defenses. <laughs> we didn't talk too much about the defenses, you recall, at the no, top of the show. <laughs> we said they were energetic, and well, 88 points later, Jamison has protection. Now looking back to the near side of the field, wide open is O'Brien. O'Brien close to midfield. I'd rather it's Cleary. He's hit hard at the 49 by Jamie LaBelle, and it'll be another first down for St. John's as uh, Mr. Cleary gets himself open, and it'll be first and 10 for the Redmen. Jamison showed a lot of poise that time. So did uh, St. John's defense. We might not be able to pick it up, but as Jamison rolls to his left, watch number 82, and there's a couple of players further back that just don't move. They stand and they watch and they wait because they know any minute this young number 15, Jamison, just might be coming away. He finds uh, his receiver to the other side, Jim O'Brien, for a nice game. All right, this is Jamison going out of bounds at the 48 as he's forced out of bounds. However, there is a flag on the play in the backfield. A holding call is the preliminary signal, and oh, does that be the bane of coaches when you see the holding call can kill a drive so often and it's happened over the years to the Jets quite often I oh think. yes uh, anytime you get a uh, play going or a drive going the way this has been going and you get a 15 yarder that walks it back the other way uh, opposite the direction that you're moving Natalie, it's got to be disheartening. Mike Cleary, by the way, has caught nine passes uh, this afternoon for 107 yards. And for Cleary, that might be his uh, best day in his career. He's a transfer from Franklin Marshall. Had a calf injury that sidelined him last week, but he's showing that he's in good form today, Mr. Cleary. Yes. Well, they're discussing things now with the Hofstra defensive captain. As you can see, we'll find out what the call is going to be. Richie Patillo. It was a preliminary signal holding call. They're going to take it, or are they going to mark the ball back 15 yards, uh, or are they going to take the play? Are well, the options being discussed right now? 6.52 to go in the game. Hofstra 46, St. John's 42. No, this is not basketball, folks. <laughs> Although we'll have a lot of basketball for you on the Long Island Sports Network. A lot of Hofstra and St. John's games. Hofstra declines the penalty. I don't know about that, Larry. Well, the ball is up at the 49-yard line, and we'll see if it hurts them. Second down and 10 as they took the down. Jamison in trouble. Now nearly falls, tries to elude a man, and does get the pass off to Blygen. It's complete, but he can't get out of the grasp of Courtney Walcott and the walk-on freshman playing one-on-one -on -one with a bigger, much bigger guy, really hung on to Dennis Blygen for dear life. I think Coach uh, Mike, Mike Bukowski played uh, a little bit of chess. He went out here over an elusive quarterback. They got his electric company to put the charge on. They did the job well. Elijah gets the ball outside. Whoa, look at that stand up there. Yeah, look at that hit by Walcott. He really stood him up. Chowinski was the man who put the pressure on number 99. Biggest play of the day for St. John's. Third down. Jamison with time. Going to up there for the big kid, Cleary, and he went all the way up, all six foot four inches, but it was overthrown as there were five gold helmeted uh, players there for the Hofstra Flying Dutchman, including Tony Mateo and Courtney Walcott. Jameson uh, had his receiver open, but had his receiver caught the football, he would not have had enough uh, for the first down unless the Cleary had come down with the football and ran another four or five yards with it. So, for one of the few times today, we're going to see a punt. <laughs> oh, yeah. For the way these teams have scored, they haven't been calling on their punter too often, and Jamison will be back to do the kicking. About a fake, a fake kick here. I, I would think, uh, with the way he sets up pretty tight, it could be a good possibility. Well, they rush hard. The kicker went down. No flag as the ball takes a good bounce for St. John's. Going to pin... Uh, Good bounce for Hofstra, rather. It's going to pin St. John's uh, in pretty deep into their territory. Make that pretty deep pin St. John's into their territory. And it'll be back on the 19-yard line where they mark it first and 10. And uh, right now, Hofstra does not want to make a mistake, Emerson. Does not want to fumble. They'd like to keep the ball on the ground, eat up time, and keep it away from Mr. Jameson. I thought they had made a mistake in uh, attempting to rush uh, Todd Jameson on the, on the punt. Uh, when, a, when a punter has his leg in the air, you cannot touch him. That they did, but yet they didn't get the call. O'Connor from the 19.
Cannon, Mullins, the running backs. Bianchini in motion. Hand off to Bianchini. Makes a nice cutback. Oh, and fumbles the football, and St. John has recovered. So just as we mentioned the mistake, St. John's gets the biggest break of the game for them, and with 5.46 to go, trailing by four, they'll get the football at the 25-yard line. Winston Ebanks, there he is, number nine, coming up with the fumble recovery. We've got a, re a replay. Now watch it. He tries to go back inside, and he, he tries to change hands with a football. Number 23, Mike Rodziano. He added to the left side where it should be. Now he's coming back to his right as he's taught to protect the football, but he tried to change it from his left hand to the right and lost it. So it'll be first and ten for St. John's. Back to throw Jamison. Time. Now, under some pressure. Trying to get away. Cannot get away from pick number 92, Ed Anbinder. <laughs> and the 5'11", 235-pound sophomore from nearby West Hempstead makes a big defensive play. <laughs> Way to go, Ed. That was a big play because Jamison... And it looks like Jamison is hurt. And he's being... Uh, Attended to, he wants to stay in. Look at Jamison, uh, an obvious pain, because this young man, as we told you, came into this game with a bruised sternum. Had difficulty, and they were able to keep him from getting hurt all day, but he is going to go off, and it's going to be a critical play for St. John's here. Let's look at the play once more. This, 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 he had fine protection, Jamison, and he stands back there. This is not slow motion. This is actual time that he had back there, but uh, number 82 or 92, that ain't... Ainsbinder finds him, and as Todd goes down, he falls on the football. Mind you, his third of his injured, it wasn't just prior to the ball game. Ten-yard loss, Bill Foley now in a quarterback number 10, and the wishbone quarterback at a Baldwin High School makes a big toss. It is going to be complete outside the 20-yard line, down at the 22. Ron Scorzelli made the play defensively, and looks like we've got another flag on the play. Let's go to the sidelines again on Joel. One of the reasons that there's no morale problem on the hospital squad is how would you like to have a young lady looking like this training you? Do they give you much flack? No, not at all. They're very respectful of what I do and what I'm, you know, working as far as athletic training goes. Early on, on uh, you want to make training, I guess, your future. Yeah, sports medicine. Okay, uh, I wouldn't mind being on Hofstra if she was training me. Barry? All right, Joel. And uh, an eligible receiver downfield negating that completion of Bill Foley to Jimmy O'Brien that moves the ball way back to the 40. They've got to go to around the 14 for a first down. And let's call it third and 25 from the 40-yard line. Out. Third and a lot. <laughs> Bill Foley, six foot, 180-pound sophomore out of Baldwin, who was a wishbone quarterback in high school. He's 13 for 25 so far, but Jamison is now back in the ball game. Jamison, big, big play of the day. Throwing up over the middle, throwing complete but way shy of the first down to around the 26-yard line. Making the reception was Cleary. Kyle Pate was in on the play, and this sets up a big fourth down play, as we said, not to be redundant, with 4.45 to go, the biggest play of the day. Ball is down around the 26, 27 yards. So. Yes, sir. Fourth and around 11. What would you do here, Barry? You're the coach, Ed. <laughs> Other than keep the ball in Todd's hand at this point. All right, Esposito wide to the left. Cleary wide to the right. Jamison. Jamison motioning to a receiver. It's going to be incomplete. And let's see if a flag is thrown. Yes. Looks like a pass interference call might be on 34. Jamie LaBelle or Ron Scorselli, number six, as Cleary was going for the ball. You saw the flag drop, and they're discussing it right now. If if what has happened, illegal use of the hand, Oscar. We'll take another look here. Watch at the tail end. Once Jamie attempts to call the receiver back. Watch uh, Kempsey, number 40. I think it was 48, Carl Pate. Carl Pate. Pate. Holds on to the jersey. That gives automatic first down. First and 10 for the 17 with 4.22 to go in this ball game. St. John's trailing by four. A field goal goes no good at this point. Cleary, not sure of his positioning on this play now. Flanks wide to the right. Looks like they might have a blitz. Jamison wants timeout. And we'll try to check how many timeouts remain. I believe two for Hofstra. And we'll try because timeouts at this point become very critical in a very close ball game. And Jamison wisely, with the uh, defensive line shifting, did not want to get caught and get a big loss. I think uh, St. John's might have one timeout left at this point now, don't they? 
I recall uh, Jamison using one early in the third quarter, and now he's used one here late in the fourth, so there's a possibility of uh, his having one left. Well, we're going to check on it, Emerson. And what an effort by Mr. Jamison. He got racked up just a couple of plays ago, came right back in the game, and of course on that uh, interference call, got another chance to try to put his club in uh, for six points. And a ball game like this, it literally just slows so rapidly. Uh, injuries don't really hurt you that long or that bad. Uh, as long as your unit is out there moving the football, had the defense been on the field, uh, he would have laid there uh, in pain and in agony, but the offense <laughs> is still there moving the football. The back of the quarterback is in. Todd comes back. Now he's on the eight. All right, first and ten. Ball at around the 12-yard line. Three wide receivers to the right side, Blygen, Cleary, and O'Brien split off on the right side as Jamison rolls left. Under pressure, gets away momentarily from Chowinski and is now going to be spun down as they really wanted a piece of it. Chuck Chowinski, number 99, the first man in. Ed Engbinder also putting the pressure on. What a job by number 99 <laughs> on that play. Play well done by the Flying Dutchman. We'll take another look at it. You watch number 99, Chuck Chayonski. He comes in from the outside. And I'm a 96 I have listed here. Now he's 99, Chuck, and he would not let Mr. Jamison get away. All right, back to the live action here. As on second down, back to throw Jamison. Incomplete on the far side. He was looking for Esposito, number 83, and it'll set up third down. Hofstra has three timeouts, and St. John's one. As we are down to three minutes and 39 seconds to go in this game, it'll be third and 12 from the 15-yard line. And another big play for that young man, Todd Jamison. All he's done is run for four touchdowns today. And Jamison on the year has rushed for nine touchdowns. The heat's on, Barry. Again, those three wide receivers to the right. Lone back is Cassa, 38. Jamison looking to the near side. It's going to be complete to Cleary. And inside the 10, down to the 8-yard line, still way short of the first down. Carl Pate made the stop as Michael Cleary picks up his 10th reception of the day. We'll take another look here to the right side of your screen. But Cleary comes in on an L-type pattern. He goes down, turns it inside. Todd sees him. Uh, Todd Jamison sees him. Turns it in. Mike Ketz. Well, St. John's has called its last time out here with 3.19 to go, fourth and three from the five-yard line. And Bob Ricca, who talked about gel you sell at halftime, <laughs> you think his stomach is like right now talking to his brilliant junior quarterback. And the play has been decided upon as Bob Ricca goes back to the bench. Coach Ricker knows that uh, now it's almost now or never at this point. The uh, Oscars out there, it's mostly out there, so they can't really the football on the ground with those three tough runners in the backfield. So they've got to try to get their points right now. Jamison is 17 for 30, passing 192 yards, one touchdown. So he's accounted for five touchdowns today, four rushing and one passing. He's going to have close to 100 yards rushing, too. All right, Jamison with Blygin and Cass in the backfield. Rolling left, looking for the yardage. He's going to run it. Jamison to the far side, leaps in the air, and he got it for the touchdown. An amazing athletic oh. play by Todd Jamison. Bad ribs and all over conclusion. He just leaped toward the end zone like a jumper, and he scores the touchdown, his fifth touchdown, a new St. John's record. And just on that note, it's 48-46. And he is down on the far side. But what an incredible player and what an incredible play by Todd Jameis. Cast all injuries to the wind. Give up the body. Give it all up. We need a score. That's what Todd Jameson did. Well, We're going to try to see it again, Barry. And you'll see a tremendous effort by an entire St. John squad. Look at those linemen and backs out front. And watch the tail in him. Jameson knows he has nothing left. It is time to give it all up. Here Look at he the goes. Somebody up, comes up, I think it's Mateo. Away. He up. leaps over Mateo. Look at that leap. <laughs> Gives it and all I think up. Went over the plane of the goal line. Somebody else caught him while he's in midair. I think Mateo or Scorzelli might have hit him in the air. But Mr. Jamison is <laughs> up there. Look at that guy. Get what the an glad afternoon. hand. We'll look at it again. What it's an afternoon's work. 
This is the thrill of college football. Here you're not being paid for it. You go out and play for alma mater. Now you give it all up. Give it everything you got. Go for it. Oh, he gets caught in the air. Boom. Scorzelli, number six, was the guy who popped him in the air. And now another very important try for the extra point. They are going to go for one here as Ragusa is on. This will give him a three-point lead if he makes it. And the ball down, the kick in the air. It is good. So St. John's 49 and 46 for Hosh. However, there is a flag on the play. And let's see who it's going to go against. It's apparently going to go against Hofstra. St. John's will decline the penalty, and it will be 49-46, the extra point good, and perhaps an onside kick coming up here. That still might be of interest here. Who knows? Who I knows? don't think so. Who knows? Jameson has tied a St. John's rushing record with 140 yards, and of course his uh, six touchdowns that he's been involved with. A personal foul has been on the kick uh, assessed, so it will be moving the football to the 45-yard line where St. John's will be kicking off. So the foul against Hofstra, the 15-yard penalty assessed, and uh, Hofstra will be getting the ball uh, probably at the 20-yard line on a uh, on a touchback here because uh, Mr. Ragusa has quite a foot, and uh, undoubtedly he'll put it in the end zone. Still plenty of time, Em, and Hofstra has all three timeouts yes, remaining. there is. That's what I was checking. 3-11, you could do a number of things in three minutes, 11 seconds. 49-46 on the far side woods. He decides wisely to uh, take the touchback, and uh, it'll be first and 10 for Pat O'Connor and the Flying Dutchman as Mickey Kwiatkowski. Let's see what strategy in this chess game he's been able to devise. 4,650 people here today, and I don't think anybody is left. As you see, so the either. kicker, Barry Cavanaro, warming up, and perhaps he could come into play here with a, a field goal to 10. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. O'Connor with the one deep back. It's McKenna, 31, in motion. Mullins, O'Connor rolling with a flag thrown. Up the middle, complete, and it's going to be Steve Mady up to the 45-yard line. However, there was a flag on the play as Steve Mady makes a fine reception. The youngster out of Beth Page who has the speed to go deep. And with Wogamuth hurt early in the game, they're going to Mady more often. Yes, sir. You'll see O'Connor comes over to the rolling to his left. He finds number 80, Steve Mady, dragging the cross down about 10, 15 yards. Fine reception. And uh, breaking this tackle, he goes. Well, a motion penalty against Hofstra is going to negate that fine gain. And they'll put the ball back on the 15, where it'll be first and 15. The flying Dutchman 85 yards away from Pater. 3.05 to go in the game. They trail 49-46. Tony Woods flank wide to the top of your screen. As O'Connor sends uh, a man to the left side. That's Pecorella, 82, in motion. Mullins, 41. And a handoff going to the big fullback, McKenna. And he busts close to the 30-yard line, close to the first down, as he showed his strength again on that play right up the middle for 14 yards. This is the time, Barry, you're fat your average is running back. You know that the opposition is playing past defense, so you want to run the football. Second and one from the 29 as they run the hurry up offense here with 2.23 to go in the game. O'Connor giving off again to the big fullback. He has the first down as he breaks off the right side of the line and Mark Jarman, number 85, with the stop. St. John's content, of course, to give these short gains. Uh, uh, Emerson, they do not want to give up the big play, and that's been the story of this game, the big play. Hofstra has been... Uh, McKenna has carried 176 yards he's gained in 20 carries. 2.04 to go, and they're staying on the ground, looking for McKenna to break one, perhaps. And he still fights for yardage, close to the 39, before he's taken down. Taken down by number 47, Reinhard Anderson. It'll be second and four on the 39. Again, the clock continues to run as they line up quickly. A minute 40 to go. Kind of keeping it on the ground here. This time looks like he'll go to the air. Has time. Looking down the sideline for Meadey. Overthrown. 
as he was defended on the play by Billy Samillo. Steve Mady, the intended receiver. I was looking for the two-minute warning, which I didn't see. <laughs> this is, uh, in our replay, basically the same play that was called back uh, just a couple of plays ago. Mady dragging back uh, from the opposite side across the front of O'Connor, and just O'Connor let him just a little bit too much. O'Connor 6 for 14 for 86 yards this afternoon. Third and four from the 39 with 131 to go in the game. Woods, flank wide to the right. On the long count, McKenna, the long running back. O'Connor with time, looking complete to Woods for the first down. Down to the 49-yard line. On the far side of the field, Blanchin defending on the play along with uh, Winston Ebanks. And uh, the clock now stopped in collegiate football, of course, Emerson. While they move the change, the clock is stopped, and it gives the team a chance to uh, make a quick huddle and get up there quickly. Now, this is a quick out of Pat O'Brien, number nine to number 12, Jerry Woods. A little turnout pattern, fine fashion, turns it upfield, tries to get as much as he can because he knows he needs the first down. Now clock is back in motion, 1.15 to go. First and 10 for Hofstra at their own 49. Need the big play here, and Woods looking over the middle, and it's going to be complete, I believe, to Tony Pecarella down at the 44-yard line, and now Hofstra calls time with 102 remaining. They still have two more timeouts remaining, and there's Tony Pecarella, the freshman out of East Islip, who's caught his third pass of the year. You'll see number 82 pop from the right side of your screen, and uh, O'Connor finds number 82, Pecarello, boom, diving catch, fine catch. It'll be second and three from the 40 four yard line, make it the 43 yard line, the nose of the football resting on the 43, and there's Mickey Kwiatkowski talking things over with uh, Mr. Pat O'Connor. I know Kwiatkowski has taken a uh, little bit to the time, he's like uh, an ant moving scene. I'd like to mention the fine assistant coaches for Austria, Harry Royal, and also their lacrosse coach, Steve Delegati, Bill Williams, uh, Bob DiGirolamo, and now Laginas. And, of course, for St. John's, we mentioned a couple of the fine assistants earlier. Uh, Bill Miltonberg, Carl Johnson, Hugh Blizzard, uh, William Ruse, Dutch Outerkirk, an old friend, and Tony Pop. They've done a great job for both these uh, teams, and we've had a dandy here. Outstanding. Defensive coaches may be hiding a bit, but the <laughs> oh, defensive they will coaches be. have to be pleased. Neither, neither have bragging rights in the defensive category. All right, second down, <laughs> and about three yards to go. A minute two remaining in the game. O'Connor under some pressure, going to have to put it up in the air, downfield for Woods, and Blyger nearly intercepts as he and Woods were battling for the football, it goes incomplete with 54 seconds remaining. You know, Barry, that could have been easily called offensive interference because just before the ball was caught, and we'll see it again in our replay, uh, watch uh, as O'Connor throws the ball down to number 12, Jerry Woods, and he's defended here, I couldn't remember the numbers, but watch number 12 as the ball barely comes down. He reaches in. That could be called offensive interference. Now, Blige in 49 was the man who was over there and nearly had the interception. Third down and three from the 44-yard line. 54 seconds to play. Woods wide to the right. Now Bianchini lines up in motion as he comes back to the near side. O'Connor under pressure, screen three, play, three. it's going to be complete, this is Mullins, <laughs> inside the 35, he has a first down, and Hostia will use another timeout here, I believe, as they're down to the 35, the clock stops with 47 seconds to play. We'll see again in our replay. You can smell this thing coming a mile away. It's green play all the way. Yeah, it gets off. What are the, the St. John big library number 70 there? Who's that guy? Johnny Rosillo. Rosillo was trying to get his hand on the football, and uh, but yet they got the screen play off. Well, they have one timeout remaining, Glenn Goldberg informs us. 47 seconds left on the clock. And St. John's leading by three. Austria and St. John's have even in the series, are even in the series. They've split the two games, and you can't get any closer than this one is today. We've I'll, talked about it at the top being a very even pick em kind of game. I'd like to hear the heart rate of Coach Bob Rick of the beat of beat of the heart of Coach Rick and Coach uh, uh, Krikowski. It's got to be a... <laughs> 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 
Both of us have felt that way. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Many times Ooh. in your fine career. Hold a B. Hold All a right. B. Dennis Pezzolisi come come comes out over the ball as O'Connor sends Woods to the right. And lining up Bianchini in a slot to the right side. Now in motion. Comes back to the near side. And O'Connor rolling the near side. Going to run it himself. He's got room and will wisely go out of bounds at around the 25. Close to the first down. And the clock stops with 41 seconds left. First down. They motion it's a first down. So O'Connor with the option there. Wisely took it out of bounds. Saves a, uh, taking a timeout there. And I think they're in field goal range right now. Well, definitely for the foot of Barry Cavanero, who has kicked as many as a 48-yard kick this year. Woods again, wide to the right, as we look at O'Connor. Mullins in motion. O'Connor looking downfield, looking, and it's going to be complete to Woods. The speedster dragged out of bounds inside the 15, down at the 14-yard line, and taken out on the far side, I believe, by Winston Ebanks. First and 10, it'll be at the 14-yard line. Both teams are using this kind of play to roll out and put the pressure on both the line and the secondary. Finds number 12, Jerry Woods, and Ebex takes him out of bounds as he picks up the first down. Woods has caught six passes for 66 yards. Good day, good day. Tony Woods, called him Jerry, but that's Tony <laughs> Woods. All right, this crowd ready to explode here at Hofstra. 34 seconds to play. First and 10 from the 14. O'Connor. Rolling, throwing toward the end zone, incomplete, down and around the five-yard line, and the intended receiver for Hofstra was number seven, Tommy Walsh, a 5'7", 165-pound youngster out of Farmingdale High School who just came into the ball game. What a play for bringing a kid in off the bench, Tommy Walsh. And gave everybody at the Hofstra side of the field stands almost a cardiac arrest simultaneously. All right, second and 10 from the 14-yard line. They're certainly within field goal range. Perhaps it'd be fitting poetic justice for this end of the tie, but who knows? 29 seconds to play. Bianchini in motion. And we may have an offside call against Hofstra as it looked like uh, we had a man move it. That youngster just came into the game, Tommy Walsh, as he was flanked wide to the left at the bottom of the, the screen. Looked like he missed the count end and uh, might have been offside and the flag dropped right in his area. Yes, that's possibly the call as we see here. And since they ran the play, uh, of course St. John's would have the option to refuse the play or take the penalty. And at this point, you'd want to refuse the play, I would think. Absolutely, you refuse the play. 25 seconds remain as they talk things over with the St. John's defensive captain. And uh, words there with uh, the St. John's defensive captain. John Donaghy, who we haven't mentioned often today, is the captain number 39. No, I'm sorry. You don't take the you don't take the penalty. You take the play. Well, apparently he will remain second and 15 from the 19. Second and 15. They took the five yards. All right. O'Connor looking for Woods, just out of his reach as he was defended by Dennis Blygen. Also over there in the area uh, was Mike Mullins, who came out of the backfield. It'll set up third and 15. They lucked out there, but you don't take the play. I don't think he would take the... Well, with the clock, the with, the, with the time remaining, he wanted to really put them... The five yards really didn't matter, I felt, you know, as far as maybe just putting them out of field goal range, but you'd rather have the, the play and make it a, possibly a fourth down situation. Now here it's a third. They Absolutely. still have a chance to get two plays off. There you go. All right. Third down and 15 from the 19. 12 seconds remain. Hofstra has one more timeout. Here's Woods deflected on the line. Let's see, number 70, I believe. Maybe it was Mark Jarmack or John Rosillo. Either one of those might have gotten up there. Maybe we can look at it again. We'll take a look again. You watch for number 85 or number 70. One of the two big men on that right side of St. John's. It looks like number 85, Jarmack, got a hand on the football. Okay, and St. John's getting goal. set here with nine seconds to go. A field goal attempt coming for Hofstra. Barry Cavanero, who has made 10 of 13 coming into this game. 
will attempt the field goal. It'll be from the 30 to make that the 26-yard line. This could tie up the game. The ball down, the kick up in the air, partially blocked. The kick will be no good. And the Redmen of St. John's with five seconds remain are going to win this football game. And Barry Cavanero can't believe it. Barry hanging his head in shame, but there's no reason to feel bad about this ball game. It was anybody's ball game from the second quarter on. It's been nip and tuck, nip and tuck. One field goal earlier, and that one, maybe we have a replay. I don't know. I thought it might have been partially touched. I think you were right, Barry. Somebody did get her hand on it. We do have a replay. We don't get a, a very close look at it, but one of the Redmen did find the football. All right. As you see, it went wide to the left. Wide to the left of the goalpost, wide to the right from the other angle. And St. John's will just fall on the ball, and we'll be hopefully talking with Todd Jamison, uh, the certain star of this game after this game, as the snap. And this game is going to be history. One second, it is all over. And the Redmen of St. John's, in a wild game, have defeated Hofstra 49-46, to and just a brilliant offensive display. Hofstra came downfield with a chance to tie it, a chance to win it, and they valiantly gave it all they had, Emerson. It was a hard... College football. Today from Redmond Field, two undefeated powers clash. Hofstra